Welcome to the sports back, uh, back we're talk, rap. Time. We're going the rap, the, yeah, the rap, not the back talk. We got the rap here. Did we do? Yeah. We'll do that tomorrow. We'll do the back talk tomorrow. We got the rap here today. We got a lot of sports. Yeah. He's George. I'm Ringer. And well, it's, it's been a it's been a couple of weeks since we uh, chatted with each other on uh, on tape. And of course, uh, before we uh, last time we did this, uh, the NBA Finals wasn't over. No, they weren't. And uh, obviously, Golden State uh, has been the winner for almost 13 di complete days because we taped on that day. Oh, right so. up to the parade in San Francisco. <laughs> and it looked like quite a parade. San Francisco is quite a town. And well, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and Draymond Green, he, he didn't have any problems telling everybody where, where it was at. Uh, no, even though he uh, maybe didn't play his bestest. He, uh, he, he was reminding everybody that, uh, yeah, Golden State is the champs. Well, and, and probably he, rightfully he's so. He's got a podcast that I haven't listened to, but I just saw today. And uh, I, as I look back, I should have taken a few minutes to listen to him. But, uh, you know, he's he's a, he's a character. You know, you, know how, you know who he might remind me of a little bit is a little bit of Stephen A. Smith. I think he, he would come off maybe a little with that much But, you know, boom. and even like Stephen Smith, I, I, he's an actor. Yeah, I mean, this is what you know. That's primarily what he does. He has his his script on the soap operas, and uh, you know. And so he, these guys, they can change suits. They're trained to do that. Yeah, you absolutely. and I are just there for the truth, or so, something that resembles it. Yeah. yeah. So were we surprised Golden State finished off Boston in six? No, no. no I, I guess I would have. I could have seen it gone in seven, and I didn't think that they would. You know, lose in Boston. You know, they lost two games in Boston, and you know, and, and that's a hard place for a home team to lose. So, uh, you know, but you know, Boston now can can go behind the Red Sox, and actually, they're playing pretty well. So they'll find a team that they can oh, that they can work there, on. There, there, there's plenty, plenty to be uh, discussed yeah. there. Of course, the NBA draft yes. has happened since then. Of course, ah. the uh, Timberwolves uh, got themselves a a big. Tall, shot blocking center for well, Walker. From Auburn. Yeah, Walker Kessler. He's uh, he's the NCAA uh, 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 block king, uh, shot yeah. shot blocking champion, and he's got good size, long reach, and you know he weighs 245 pounds. He's 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 got a pretty good build on him right now, and he'll he'll grow into that a little bit more. But I see right now the Wolves are setting up. They're finally getting that big center in the middle, one that can defensively, because they've been lacking defensive rebounds, defensive mm -hmm. shot blocks, you know, and they put the cat on the corner, you know, and it's a... Uh, I thought it was very interesting. I, this morning while I was getting ready for work, they had an interview with uh, with the, all, the, all the guys, yeah. and I couldn't remember the third guy's name that the Timberwolves had drafted out of, uh, out of Memphis, uh, Minot. Yeah. And uh, anyway... I, I, the place where I looked up gave grades on the draft from this one spot. That's all uh -huh. it was, and that the grade on Kessler was a C plus. That they must have felt like the Wolves reached a little bit, but it was a neat thing I think for the Wolves to have a presence in the middle that they could have on the floor with Nas Reed and and, and, and play. Well, you know, and, 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 and Conley traded a 19 round draft, 19 round draft pick. For a 22 and a 29, and and that's, this apparently was a pretty good deal, and so that yeah, might have been that might have been a nice swap. The the guy seems to be well to say he's proactive. I think is true, and and also he's they're aware enough that even somebody with uh, Kessler's physical abilities is going to take a, take a little bit. Yeah, I think they're uh, they're going to look to try to keep a couple of these guys on. Yeah. I don't know about this Minot kid in the second round, and of course they got a point guard out of Italy. Yeah, that's not seen. coming over yeah. right now. They're going to let him uh, develop a little bit more, and then uh, you know you kind of reminded me of your good friend Ricky Rubio, yeah, uh, who the uh, Wolves uh, who came over a little later and uh, and everything else. So I I didn't mind what the Wolves did. I wasn't expecting anything flashy, splashy with the 19th overall pick. Uh, they, I think they did themselves well. Then moved up and got the 26th pick, so they ended up with two first round picks. That's right. Which was, I think, is kind of a a big deal. Uh, but we'll see if more out of uh, Duke makes a big big splash or not. And well, you and, know, when he came on last year, and, and you know, he was just kind of the run of the mill type, uh, you know, guard before. But but he came on, he scored well, and. Uh, 
Uh, you know, he was one of the top, top uh, basketball players in the country when he was done. Now they might just say, well, maybe he had a spurt. Well, maybe he did. It's possible. But, uh, uh, you know, they maybe, dropped, may, maybe he'll come around. Who never know? Big Chet goes uh, number two overall to Oklahoma City. You know what the cute thing is about that now? We've had cute. The, <laughs> the cute thing about this, we've had, we've had Jalen Suggs and, and, uh, and, and, and Big Chet. Two years in a row, they've been drafted in the top five, and they're both from Minnehaha Academy. Now, my question is, how come Minnehaha Academy, uh, you know, did they did they win everything all the time? Yeah, they won pretty much everything when yeah. uh, when Suggs was there. Of course, you know, Jalen played football, and and uh, they had a very good uh, baseball team over the last few years. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, and, and I do this because money talks, right? Uh, uh, many pri- pri- academy, private yeah, uh, schools, uh, money talks, and BS walks, and so um, yeah, they were able to bring in some of the top players and. Uh, Whatever, I, I, you know, I guess uh, we'll we'll go with, uh, well, with listen, what we got. Hey, never happened in Minnesota before, and I think this is just kind of an indication of what's going on because we're still developing some top shelf blue yeah. chip basketball players. Yeah, you know, two ways. Were you surprised that Bandero went uh, number one overall rather than uh, oh my gosh, the kid who went number three? Why can't I now all of a sudden come on? Um, well, yeah, I really was kind of the kid out of Auburn. Holy yeah. smokes! You know who I'm talking. About. <laughs> Smith is all I can think of, but that doesn't seem right. Anyway, so no, I, I overall, I, I, I thought, I thought Holmgren would probably go first. Yeah, I thought it was a possibility you that know, he could go to I, Orlando yeah. and bring the two uh, mini haha boys together. That'd have been kind of fun you know, and, and interesting and it's to really, see. You know, I mean, it's one of the things that that, that when you watch Holmgren play, you know, he's not an inside person. The man, no. oh man, oh man! How do you stop that three-point jump shot? Is way beyond me, and it's just—and he is so smooth and such a great athlete. Uh, you know, I—he's—he's he's thin and he's—he's going to take a beating at that level, but he doesn't have to go in there and bang. Uh, no, not the way Kessler's going to have to. No, no, there's not. There, I don't. I don't think he's. That's not on his uh, contract that he's going to ah, sign. Kevin Durant, he's almost as tall, and he he does real well out there. And, yeah, he. Yeah. yeah, I. I would. They're they're similar players. They uh, are. When you think yeah. about it, when when you're going to see what what you're going to get, I think you're going to see similar type players there. Maybe not. Maybe not the star quality uh, Kevin Durant does, but I. You know, Chet's. We'll we'll see how he handles it all. So. Anything well, else from the NBA draft that? Uh... No, I, I, you know, it was an interesting draft in so much that there probably weren't a whole lot of top shelf basketball. Play. I mean, the, it's not like it was in the old days because so many take off at the end of two, and it's just you know, and it's uh, it, it's just a little bit different. I know that you read the Minneapolis paper. Did you yeah. read Suhan's article about the NBA draft? I usually don't read because he's kind of like Roycey in the fact that they yeah. all they do is complain. And yeah. in this one, Suhan was complaining, but he was complaining that the NBA draft essentially is a farce. It's 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 whatever. Because okay, let's take the whole Timberwolves. If you watch the if you watch any of the drafts, and of course I do, if somebody makes a trade, they announce the trade. They they tell you what it is. They don't hide it from yeah. you. Well, in the NBA, for some reason. They get these trades and then they don't tell you what they are. So the the uh, the Wolves drafted at 19, but we ne- we knew that the player at 19 was going to Memphis. We knew that that was what was going on, but they made him come out and put on the Timberwolves hat. We knew he was being traded to Memphis. Well, uh, you know, I mean, th- then and then was it? Did we get the picks from New Orleans? I can't remember who we got the 22 and the 26. Anyway, it doesn't matter. When we drafted that, the other team that sent us the pick, everybody knew they was going to wear a Minnesota Timberwolves hat. No, he had to come out and put on the Memphis Grizzlies or New York, whatever it was. And I'm just, he's right. Sue Hand is right. Why are they like treating us like children? Like we can't, we know what's going on. Well, because I think it's a gigantic party, and it's the same way with the football uh, draft. But why? Why would you bring? Why would you bring a kid out onto the stage I, and have him put on a hat? You know, he's for a team he's never going to play for. Never. The trade is. Done. Yeah, yeah. What the heck? Yeah, go put that in your in your collection. So I'm begging you, and I agree with Jim Suhan that you you should boycott the NBA draft in the future. And I usually do because it's in the summertime and there's better things to I be doing. I don't pay too much attention to it. But either. 
Big Shot was being drafted, and I had to see what the Wolves were going to do. And so, anyway, NBA draft was was interesting to to say the least. Uh, it's it's a little different than the NFLs and the others, but of course, the NHL draft will be coming up here, I believe, uh, late next week, uh, right after the Fourth of July. And I suppose that kind of maybe should lead us into. A hockey conversation, or you've got the? No, I'm just taking. I would, I'm going through the prospects here, but oh, I'm also you've got you got about, your NBA draft stuff. I, there. I was uh, I was also thinking about the prospects for the Minnesota Gophers, and uh, they huh? they were doing real well until my friend Parker Fox blew the other blew the other knee out. How how is that? How what what where in the realm of what, what what do you think the statistical possibilities are that you play basketball your entire life? You go play Division Two basketball at Northern State. You opt up and you get into you get a Division One offer from the University of Minnesota. And not only do you blow one knee, but you blow both knees. Oh yeah, well, the, 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 statistic, the statistical possibilities have to be mind blowing. Both, both preseason. You know where there there really was no opportunity for him to even work out much, but it's uh, you know so you got you got to feel for the guy and uh, Parker Fox. Well, well, I, I I suspect that they could keep him around for another year. Would I'm sure there's enough classes for a guy to take that maybe he would get his his dream fulfilled of playing Division One basketball. Well, maybe maybe in 23, he will. 24. Yeah, no, and I, and I from what I understand, down in Sioux Falls, he is just an incredible character. So. Uh, you know, I mean, I hope he does come back, and I hope he can fill it out. But, hey, uh, what a horrible thing to happen to this guy. It's, uh, uh, you know, you're trying to do the best you can, and you get wiped out like that. It's just... I agree. Yeah. So I, this well, happens, but as long as I'm bringing it up, I'll just... Yeah. I'm taking a look at my notes here. I don't know if you saw this or not. I saw Adrian Peterson Adrian, is going to box. He's going to box. And he's gonna he's gonna box uh, he's gonna box Levon Bell. I hope they beat the bejeebers out of each other. I hope nobody watches it. I hope nobody pays the freight. And this big payday that they are all hoping for on this card, wherever it is, I hope they get zilch. Well, NBA player Nick Young, who I don't know who that is, and rapper Blueface are on the undercard. Okay, I, I'm just saying, this sports is up. Sports is. Sports let let it rip, guys. Uh, go go have fun. Uh, you know, I know that uh, the WWE isn't uh, ac- a reality. It's a uh, it's entertainment, and uh, I'd rather go watch that than watch those two guys box. I I, I I'm sure that like I said, I'm sure they're getting a big payday. They are yeah, just anyway. what they need. They they don't have enough. They need more. Anyway, Reese McCauley of Invergrove Heights, and we should have bring this up for tomorrow. She uh, she she beat her older sister. Isabella on the second playoff hole to qualify for the U.S. Girls Junior Championships, 18 and 23 of July at Bowling Green, Kentucky. The Macaulays are, uh, well, I don't know what what the old man has to pay for his, their green fees, but I bet you it's lots. Now these are the these are the girls at uh, Golf for Simley, I believe. Yeah, if I rem- yeah, if I'm yeah, yeah, recognizing yeah. the name correctly, they are the ones. Yeah, yeah, that uh, they, they're gonna they, they'll be able to pay them back. No all, those, all those green fees that, if he's worried about it, uh, once they get onto the tour, they will uh, that will all be taken care of. So, yeah, uh, there's yeah, Josh Minot from Memphis. I see down there. Yeah. All right. What do you got next there? Yeah. The other one was was uh, Hugh McElhenney. Yeah. He died. He, he was 93. But I remember life. when he came to the Vikings, and they practiced at Bemidji, and we went over and and to see. Because we everybody knew Frank. I mean, we knew Frank by by first name, and he kind of knew all us. So we go, we watch him practice on a Saturday night, and McElhenney would come out. First off, Tommy Mason would come out. He had forearms like this. He he carried the football, and you couldn't see any of the football. It was just forearm. And I just thought he's smiling and laughing and showing us how he carries the ball and stuff. Hugh McElhenney comes out. He's got a little <coughs> hair, curly hair driven. He looked like he, he looked like uh, you know like uh, a, just a, an actor, a good actor, and it's just it's so good looking. And he was already kind of busted up quite a bit, but but Hugh McElhenney hang on hung on for the Vikings for a few years. He started playing professional football 1952, and so uh, you know so he had been in the league eight years. But even at that, you know, he was probably 31, 32, and this was would have been 1960, and so. 
anyway, he passed on, and he was the San Francisco 49ers million dollar backfield in the mid 1950s. Wow! So he was really a really a super duper guy. And even at the end, of the, there's a picture of him there. He's got this smile on his face. I mean, that is that's a seductive look. <laughs> uh, an experienced, experienced elderly man. Yeah. What else you got in your oh, uh, my, packet of, my of good information? Friend Deshaun Watson. Wow. You, you're really. You, are you? Are you purposely trying to agitate me this morning, this well, afternoon, no, or this it's, evening? It's, it's just like one of the things where, I mean, he's going to get suspended, and rightly so. I mean, mm. they, it's 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 somewhere along the line. The idea has to come across to these guys. You can't do this. You might think so. But. You might think so. And so, you know, uh, I don't know what who, what kind of plans Cleveland has. This, this is a horrible on. analogy, but yeah. we put White Ulrich up on a pedestal. He thinks he can. No, he can't do anything. He's not that kind of. That's. I mean, we do put these these guys and gals up on pedestals and adore them for what they do athletically. And then I think they think, well, that gives me carte blanche to do yeah. whatever the heck I want. But, you know, of all the great athletes you've known, and you've known quite a few of the really great ones, generally had a style and a class that set Ooh. them apart at, at all levels. And this, this, this is a guy that, with all his incredible talent, and there's no denying it, uh, there's just so many people that are coming forth and saying that, you know, I mean, and we can't have these guys crawling around without paying some dues. Besides, how much was that going to cost him? A half a year? I don't know if it's a... Yeah, I, I, you know, I think back to the Adrian Peterson, as long as you brought him up earlier, yeah. and uh, he got 15 games, remember, for his little incident. Yeah. Uh, I'm... Uh, if Deshaun Watson somehow gets less than that, and I mean, what, yeah. what? don't get everybody take me wrong on this, what Adrian Peterson did was not good, but if that is deemed more egregious, egregious than what Deshaun Watson has done in the eyes of the NFL, I'm going to be shocked. I mean, yeah, no, he, I would be he, in the, in for, it, for taking a switch to his kids behind. Yeah. He, he he got suspended for a season essentially. If Deshaun Watson gets any less than a season, uh, th there's there's a travesty of justice, and there should be an anyway. Well, and the NFL's under under um, they're under scrutiny these days. They even had to testify to Congress last year. Week. And so, uh, for exactly the same, same thing, thing, which is why yeah. why Dan Snyder is going to be done as the, yeah. the owner yeah. of the Washington Commanders, and yeah. why Deshaun Watson has to sit at least. Well, maybe he's not going to be done, but they're going to force his hand. I well, think they're this, tired of the crap hole of uh, well, Dan uh, this, Snyder. This, this this article will cheer you up a little bit. Tell me about the College World Series. Yeah, I'll tell you about the College World Series. Here, you know, we we make a big deal. You, I, everybody about why certain teams make the tournament, okay? So you've got your conference champions that make the tournament. So if you're thinking about the basketball tournament, I think if I remember right, there's 32, 33, something like that, number of teams that automatically make it. And then there's the other 35 that get selected. And we know that there's certain ones in there, but we know that there's teams that get in as 11s and 12s that probably you're going, well, it could have been this team, it could have been that team, whatever. Well, let's talk about Mississippi in the college baseball. Here's where I'm going with this. Mississippi was the last team, the last team to make the tournament by an at-large bit, to, to, to get in by, by selection. And then they ran the table, basically. They won 10 out of 11 games. Uh, they, like I said, basically came in as the 35th best team, 36th best team in the, in the 64 team field, and they won it all. Uh, the SEC went crazy this year with Arkansas, and of course Oklahoma will be part of the SEC in a couple of years, and uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting somebody else right off the top of my head. Texas A&M is in the SEC, and so uh, Texas was in, um, and all of a sudden you start looking at these teams that were in the tournament, and nearly half of them were in the SEC. Um, all of them, except for Notre Dame, were uh, uh, Notre Dame didn't yeah, Notre Dame made yeah. it. Uh, we're basically all from, from the south, and uh, it was fun to watch. I watched not enough of it, but uh, the College World Series, I like how they they used to put it into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They used to stretch it out over the weekend, and they got smart. No, let's play baseball on the weekends. Yeah, that's Let, Let's not wait till Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. They got it 
down. They did it the right way. They used to try to stretch it way out. They finally figured out that, you know, we can get this done in 10 days or 11, less than the, in the 10 or 11 days. And uh, the, the, the heat was a little oppressive. I'm glad I wasn't actually there because I don't know how I'd have handled it. Uh, there were a couple of games in the afternoon when the sun shines down on that baseball oh. field in Omaha, and it, it was in the hundreds, and uh, the, the, the fans, the seats were, were empty uh, because people just were, were not going to go out and do that. But uh, kudos to Mississippi for, for doing what they did. You again. Know, in the first game, uh, their pitcher carried a perfect game in the sixth inning, and then they had three homers in a row. Now, if I'm an opposing pitcher and they're going ding, 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 I'm starting to get an inferiority complex. Oh, the and thing, they, they hammered them 10 to 3. And the thing about that is is the place where they played used to be TD Ameritrade Park. I can't remember the name of it now because it, it doesn't matter. In Omaha, it's very tough to hit a home run. A. B. It's very difficult to hit a home runs in college because uh, you still got the bats that have a little of the. You still get the ping, but you don't have the power. And so for them to hit home runs like they were, uh, like they did. Uh, that was. Well, that's uh, the that's first time since '98 that anybody's got three. Three in a row. Three in a row. Uh, that was that was even a after and the. That's the, Louisiana State. Remember, that's when they used to win everything. Old LSU. Old yeah. LSU. Now they've got a new pitching coach. They do. <laughs> Lonzy, as you, as you brought up LSU. Not quite yet. He's he still got to wait uh, one more, 24 more hours, 30 more hours uh, before West West Johnson is going to leave the Twins and become. Uh, the pitching coach at LSU. You, I got to. I got to give him his props, though, for why he's doing it. Um, although I think he's living in a little bit of a fantasy, because if he thinks, well, he knows what college baseball has, but for some reason, you tell me. You tell me what you think the reason is. His wife and kids live in Arkansas. They wouldn't move to Minnesota, I believe. That I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that. Not they hot enough. No, well, not, not, not hot enough. There you go. Yeah. Not hot enough. So he was complaining that he doesn't get to see his kids, doesn't get to see his kids grow up. And I'm like, well, have your kids moved to Minnesota? I think maybe he knew that this could be a, 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 a it was something he wanted to try. Wes Johnson now wanted to see if he could do it at the major leagues, found out that he could do it, and then... The wife and the kids and him finally said, look, we we can't live like this anymore. And uh, he's going home. He's going to go to LSU, going to move out of Arkansas where he was the, one of the coaches yeah. and uh, uh, move to LSU, which is only further south, so even warmer for the wife and kids. Well, no, but so. you know, my, my good friend Patrick Rusey, he, he says this is a good time for him to do it. Uh, he knows where he's going and what he's doing. And he says we all kind of make our changes for a reason, and this is a good change for him to make. So yeah, you get a little. You get a, yeah. You don't necessarily have the length because if you think about the baseball season for a coach, probably starts February yeah. one because you got to be in at training camp before everybody gets there and do all your stuff, and then you're there till at least uh, October. So you're giving up uh, a good eight months straight of uh, really not getting home if you're doing it the way that Wes Johnson was doing it, and uh, you know with with college ball at least. Uh, I guess if you're moving, if you have your family there, you're seeing them there every day. But you're also uh, getting some time off as well uh, during the off season, which is a lot longer for college baseball. Going to make three hundred eighty thousand dollars as the pitching coach for LSU. Oh, not too shabby. No, no, that's yeah, uh, it, that's that's not shabby at all. They only gave them twenty five thousand dollars incentive to move. Well, to, like to I say, that. That you know, there was a point in time that LSU was a dominant, dominant player in, in college baseball, and they want that back. I would well. They want to be yeah. They want to be every, in, everything. Yeah, in everything, whether they cheat at it or not. Right? LSU basketball. Don't, yeah. They, don't, just, All right, yeah. Just, just saying. Just saying. They'd never do that. They would never. Uh, uh, what's with the Lynx? <sighs> that team. I. They may run out of time to get themselves into a spot where they can get into the playoffs or get themselves in where they don't end up playing the number one team right off the bat. This, this team, now that they've got Sylvia Falls back, this Mariah Jefferson seems to be uh, uh, somebody that can that can make things happen. Ariel Powers was has been off and on, but she was on last night. On last and night. they uh, absolutely you know kicked the bejeebers out of uh, the Dallas Wings last night. Um, they, they're still out, outside of the playoffs looking in. They've got, I think, 15 or 16 games left. I can't quite remember. Um, so almost half the season left over. Um, Cheryl Reeve uh, 
I, I think is one of the best coaches in the WNBA. If anybody can get them going in the right direction, it's her. Um, you know, they had some what I would call bad losses early in the year. They did, yeah. um, And so hopefully they've won three out of four. They get the Las Vegas on Friday night. That's one of the, that I think is the top team in the NBA that I'm talking about, but uh, played them right to the brink uh, a week or so ago uh, in Las Vegas. And so if they can beat Vegas, I think the confidence on that team goes this way. And, uh, and then they do make a run. They, they, they should be making a run. Um, I think well, we predicted them all to, to win their division earlier, so yeah. it's, uh, it, it, you know. it's it's yeah, it's it's concerning that things like that happen. But we we, we watched the Twins last year, and I don't know if anybody can ex still explain all that after what uh, they're doing this year. But we'll talk more about the Twins. I got a feeling in a few minutes. What else you got on this? Well, I'm just going through a couple of things. There's some. There's yeah. some uh, um, what else? Let's mean? talk about let's talk about some some golf. Seen as well, we had the U.S. Open there. Yeah, the U.S. Open a couple of weeks ago, a couple Sundays ago, and uh, yeah, it, it looked like uh, Matt Fitzpatrick maybe he was going to uh, pee it away. I'll, I'll use that word as he hit into the fairway bunker on the 18th hole and had an island inside of the bunker sitting in front of him, but uh, apparently it was off just enough where he could get that shot up there and nestle it in there. And, you know, the, the, the fun part of him winning the U.S. Open uh, at Brookline was is that he won the U.S. Amateur there nine, eight, nine years ago. And uh, there, there must be something about playing in Boston that the Englishman, Matt Fitzpatrick, likes. And so how did, the, how, did the, how did the Saudi golfers do? They did uh, okay. They had some that made the, the uh, cut. They had some that didn't. Um, you know, the, I'm glad that it's kind of settled down the whole LIV. Uh, Brooks Kepka uh, left. Uh, uh, Wolf left the other day. Uh, Kepka's brother had gone before, so that didn't surprise anybody. Yeah. Like I said, I. I yeah, we, 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 we've been down the LIV road before, yeah. and. and uh, it's 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 about the money and, and what did the PGA do to only to confirm that that's what it was about? They raised their purses. They are now going to have different end of the year tournaments that are going to be non cut more money. And I'm just like, okay, you guys went there and basically told these guys you shouldn't go for more money. Then they left, and now you're going to give your guys more money, which is what they were asking for. And I'm like, well, that uh, I I don't think played out well for the PGA. But it is what it is. It's going to be like this. Um, there's too much money from the Saudi uh, back there. I mean, they're going to be able to stick with it, even if even if they don't get a following, even if people boycott them, say I'm not going to go watch them. Um, eventually, it'll all kind of fall you know, away. You know, all, those, all those PGA guys. You know how much money they get from from the government? Nothing. Yeah. And also, they have this thing, and, and I, maybe this is kind of the way the PGA might be making a snake, might not be, but they only pay to a certain level when they're paying out. And all the other people that aren't making that cut, they're hurting, and I understand that. And it's just, you know, but it, it's, it's, it's meritorious pay. How well did you do? And I think that, uh, I think... The Saudi players don't really don't have that problem. They're spreading it out, and also they don't have that many golfers. Um, well, and on purpose, I think, because they want to make sure that the 48 that they do have yeah. get as much money as they can possibly get. Well, and that brings us to uh, to uh, the U.S. Senior Open. Yeah, I watched. I, you know, it was it was a tough sell this last Sunday because they had the travelers on that was had a, had a kind of an exciting finish. The U uh, the women's PGA was on, and then the U.S. Senior Open had to had to be moved over to uh, the Golf Channel. But uh, they had an exciting finish, and of course, um, Patrick Harrington. How, I mean, how do you how do you not like the guy? The son of a gun always seems to have a smile on his face, and he plays good golf. Oh yeah, five hundred sixty-six. That's not bad. That's it's good. Know. Good finishing day, yeah. and uh, ended up winning by a shot. It was a little tense at the end, and had a good finish. Hey, I always like when seniors do well. Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing wrong with a little of that. Of course, July is filled with the U.S. Amateurs and all these other golf tournaments that are always good, good fun to watch. So the, those will be coming up in July. Oh. Are you putting all that away? Out? You, no, you, no. You, I was just thinking. I just see what, see if I have anything else in my, in my notes here. Uh, 
stuck that in my blues thing, but I might be running out of stuff. Oh, there's lots of stuff that we haven't talked about yet, George. Geez, we could fill another hour. Don't go away. Don't, I'm kidding, don't, folks. Don't, don't go away. <laughs> yeah, please, don't go away. Uh, we've gone through the NBA. Yeah. Um, we've not done the NHL yet, so we, we haven't thought, done let's, the let, NHL. Let, you, know what, you know what I did the other night? You watched NHL hockey? I watched the final game, and I'll tell you why. I watched these guys. They beat each other's brains out for a couple of weeks and when it's all over they line up and and and, and, I, and I'll tell you some of the responses by by the Colorado um, I mean it was it was close to our they should have got a rule I mean they were down on the ice hugging and whatever and it's just like geez these hockey players I know they're close it used to be rumored hockey teams are so close one guy can take a shower for the whole bunch and just, so that was always a standard joke amongst wrestlers. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but I tell you why Colorado was a tough, tough team to beat. And I have to kind of reevaluate my thoughts about about uh, uh, goaltenders. You have to be a good enough goaltender to win. Who did? I, who made me anyway? I. Yeah, I, I agree. I you know everybody told. I'll I'll, I'll bring my argument uh, out. Everybody said the Wild need need Wild Mark Andre Fleury because that's the only way they can make a run to the uh, finals. And of course, even though Colorado maybe was one of the favorites going into the Stanley Cup uh, uh, playoffs, uh, everybody kept saying if they lose, it's going to be because of Darcy Kemper. It's going to be they're going to lose because of Darcy Kemper. Well, guess what? Colorado raised the cup for the third time, yeah. and uh, it was with Darcy Kemper in goal. Yeah. And uh, so I don't want to hear anybody tell no, me that he's going to go down as well. And this is, you know, some people he's not that good. He's you know, he's going to go down in history as the guy that raised the cup. And that's just uh, Jordan Bennington a couple years ago. Yeah. Rick, he, I mean, made the run through. He's going to go down as a Stanley Cup champ. Everybody was calling him a bum this year, and then he helped take out the Wild. So uh, I, I will live the rest of my life. From 52 till whenever I am, and every time somebody tells me that our goal is not good enough, I'm going to say Darcy Kemper. Enough said. Boom, Darcy well, Kemper. Yeah. And then, and then they can they can try to tell me that I'm wrong because everybody said Dar Darcy Kemper was with the Wild. Uh, Guess Mark what? Andre Fleury was not was not the cause of them losing. Well, I'm not saying that he no, was, but, but what I'm saying is you wouldn't. don't you no. don't don't sit here and tell me and don't tell me that you only got to play one goaltender and he's got to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. That's a that's a that's a fallacy. It's 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 not the way that it is. No. Having said all that, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I I was I, I did a baseball game on the radio last night and the uh, after the game, even though the senior legion team had lost. Uh, they were very quick as I was walking out of the uh, press box to remind me that I had picked Tampa Bay in six games. Even when Tampa Bay was down two, I said they would come back and win in six. They were in the bleachers. They were on the field. They were by the can. They were all telling See, me, hey, River! Somebody's listening. Somebody's listening. And so yeah. I said that to the somebody. Yeah. I said, well, at least the kids are paying attention, A, to what I'm saying, which is, I mean, gospel, right, folks? I Anyway. And they're they're they're, they're engaged. They're they're, yeah. they're willing to talk about sports, which of course makes me happier than a bug in a rug. And uh, they said, "Well, if they were, do you think they would could have won it in seven? And I said, "Well, absolutely. I would have said they were going to win in seven. I still believe that Tampa Bay is is still has the best organization. Now, Braden Point didn't get a chance to play, and yes, there were injuries across both sides. Don't I I understand that." But Braden Point is one of the best players for Tampa Bay, and uh, he was not an, a, a factor really in the series. And uh, yeah, congratulations to Colorado. Guess whose division they're in? That makes it harder for the Wild to come well, back. You know what I always said? I watched Colorado play more than any other team, except for the Wild, mostly because of the Wild. But you know, it, it, it I, I have not seen um, uh, forechecking like they did. And they come on you, I mean, really like a herd of buffalo. And it's just, and they come right on there. And, and I, you know, you can't cover everything. And I, I, they didn't do it that often. And Tampa Bay oftentimes was able to negate that. But they did it often enough to score. And when they did, I mean, it, 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 it's a powerful rush. It really is. Kale McCarr was the Conn Smythe Trophy, the MVP of the uh, playoffs. I, I thought McKinnon might get it, although McKinnon was... Uh, 
He only had two goals in the uh, in the Stanley Cup in the six games. I think that obviously cost yeah. him. Uh, McKinnon is dynamic, but so is McCarr. Don't anybody uh, get get feisty on me and say I, I don't understand Kale McCarr. Uh, you know, he's a, a, a Bobby Orr uh, type, of, type of defenseman who's going to score, but probably plays a little more defense than your good friend Bobby Orr Mike. Anyway, and uh, so ha having said all that, of course, uh, Colorado uh, – is the favorite to win next year, but I have to I have to talk about what I did on 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 Monday night. Uh, Monday night, the Twins were playing. Of course, the first game against Cleveland. And again, we're going to talk about the Twins in a few minutes. But I believe it was on Monday night. Could have been two. No, it couldn't have been Tuesday night because I was doing baseball. Anyway, if you haven't had a chance and you follow ESPN, they had a show on about Colorado Avalanche and the Detroit Red Wings from the mid '90s and the hatred the uh, rivalry between these two teams now it was it's a two-hour thing and I after I got done I said that I had wasted 90 minutes because I missed the first 30 minutes of it but it's compelling if you if you're a, a even if you're not a hockey fan you 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 can, you can get into this uh, ESPN did a heck of a job telling the story about Claude Lemieux and Darren McCarty and the fights and the Game in March 26, 1997. I'm never going to forget March 26, 1997, because they talked about it in the show for about 20 minutes. But there was an absolute melee. Now I remember growing up the North Stars in Toronto. They had a fight. At, if I remember right, listening to it on the radio with my uncle Paul, tell you why that I understand why I am maybe the way I am. I think they had a fight that went like an hour and three minutes. Somewhere way back in the late 70s, early 80s. That, that's what I remember. Maybe not correct, but that's what I remember. Anyway, Colorado and Detroit had one of these Donny Brooks that were all six players. Nobody came off the bench. And back when the North Stars did that happen, nobody came off the bench, but the six guys went at it. And there was blood and everything else. And Eli's watching this and he's like, well, that guy's really bleeding. And I'm like, well, that, this tells you that, you know, it, it, it was for real. And uh, this went on for a four or five year period. And, uh, of course, they talked about uh, uh, Konstantinov and the car accident after Detroit wins the uh, cup, which I had forgotten about. Uh, and so it was, it was compelling. Uh, if you've got uh, two hours and you're an ESPN Plus uh, person who, well, oh, I do. Hey, yeah. okay, I'll just say it this way. It's worth the $7 if you don't think you're going to get to see it on TV. It's worth the $7 to spend for a month to go see it on ESPN Plus because uh, it was riveting. It was, uh, I tried to watch the Twins and I kept going back to it. I couldn't stop watching it. That's how good it was. So well, you uh, know, there's and, my recommendation and, on and, hockey. And NHL players have, have long been aggressive, but I always remembered, I don't remember a lot of people picking a fight with Gordie Howe. And I, I, I often wondered why <coughs> was that? Um, so that's one of the things you have to determine in that league. And it was interesting, if I can add to it, because Brian Burke uh, was on there and he was talking about why there were no suspensions, this bloody melee that they had. Yeah. There were no suspensions and there was nobody kicked out of the game. And it was because of this hit that Claude Lemieux put on Draper where he basically busted in his face. His, the trainer they had on there basically talked about the fact that his face was dented in at a 90 degree angle. You could see the 90 degree angle from him getting pushed into the boards by Claude Lemieux. And Claude, uh, well, he was a dirty player. I'm going to say it that way. I think he wouldn't say it that way. He would say I was a physical player. Uh, a lot of people would classify him as dirty. But the, the, the compelling part of it was him and McCarty. McCarty was the enforcer for the Detroit Red Wings. And during the show, they had a, well, they had an audience of, Four or five hundred people that were listening to the stories, and they had videos, and they brought people in. And McCarty and Claude Lemieux sat closer than we are right here, and they did this whole thing. And I thought they basically Lemieux said at the end, and McCarty said at the end, "This is what hockey is all about—that we can go out and beat each other's brains and and despise each other, but then you let it go." Um, but Kyle Draper, who had his face busted in by Claude Lemieux, yeah. said they asked him at the end of the show. Can you forgive, or have you forgiven Claude Lemieux? And he goes, no. And that was, and, and, and so it's it's just it. Like I said, it was it was awesome. No, uh, athletes don't give it up that easy. They take it to bed with them that night and keep it for years. Yeah, if you bust your face, I'm uh, like, you know, jaw yeah. wired shut the whole deal. Yeah, it's, that's it, it, right. It's a pretty big deal. Anything else? Hockey. The NHL draft is coming up. We'll talk more about that next week. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I no. Outside the fact is, I watched Slapshot last week. Uh, you watched Slapshot last uh, week. It was on. T- it's actually a pretty good movie. It is funny movie. Yeah, I, haven't, yeah. I, I haven't seen it for a while. Yeah. Moneyball was on last night. Guess who stayed up too late oh, watching that? Oh, oh, oh. that Still dirty my favorite part. game. Fell, fell, fell asleep. Right before they go to the trade, where they go to the trade, where where they're wheeling and dealing on the phone, phone, and he's pumping his fist, I missed it. <laughs> Fell asleep, woke up, and they're already at the twentieth game of the of the uh, when they went twenty in a row, and I'm like, son of a gun! I, anyway, no, off to bed I went. That is, and it's not only a great movie; it's a super book, Mike Lewis, you know. And it's uh, you 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 read that, and you, uh, my eyes were completely were completely shut before I realized just exactly what goes on in that league. And that's the same way that's the same way the NHL worked it when they expanded to Las Vegas. They they were basically playing money ball and somebody played it pretty well there. They played it pretty well yeah. right there, yeah. That, yeah. that that is for sure. So yeah. uh, let's talk twins. Let's do that. Let's talk the twins. Of course uh, I, I, I said on the radio this morning, George, I don't know if you were listening, but I said six days ago this morning, on Thursday morning, Twins Nation was in a panic. We were, because there were going to be two games behind uh, Cleveland, and it was... Uh, they had blown two games. Blown two games. And they were one game out of first place. And then what happened? And then uh, the Twins uh, put some nice games, to get, nice games together. They go, they win one nothing, and then they lose one nothing on Thursday and, and Friday last week. And then what happened? Then they and explode. Then, and then they go 6 nothing, and they take two from Colorado, and then the unfortunate part of this whole thing is right now they're three games ahead of Cleveland, yeah. and we're pretty happy. Yeah. But it should be five games. Well, it should because be. Because Emilio Pagan's going to get one of these, and maybe one of these at the same time if he keeps blowing games like this. When, uh, you know, you walk and then you throw a wild pitch and you put people in scoring position and then... Well, you know, and i tell you what. Hey, I, you Emilio know, I, I, the Twins right now are taking it. Cool with Archer. Look at Jen over there, one of the biggest Twins fans. She's hiding behind the TV. She doesn't even want to hear me talking about yeah. Emilio Pagan because she's going to start throwing things at a wall or something. Well, but they, they, they're taking Archer. Uh, I mean, Archer, what did he, he pitch? Uh, he 75, 78 pitches the other night. And then, and, and uh, Johan Duran, they're not using him very much either. I mean, they're using well, I them... They I, I hope to, they use them as little as possible. As little as possible. And Let so, that young iron keep developing. And so the rest of it, you know, we have some starters that are actually doing the job. Gray was was pretty good yesterday. And uh, so, well, so was Devin Smeltzer so in the game Smeltzer that he in the, the game, game that they lost three to yeah. two. Smeltzer pitched. Uh, and, Smeltzer and, and, has had a great season. And the scary part about it is the one run he gave up in the sixth inning. They, Kepler couldn't find the ball in the sun. Come on now, you're a major leaguer. Uh, you, you don't lose the ball anyway. We'll let it go. That was the first run they scored, and then they got two off of Pagan. Golly, I even get mad at it. That's going to become the new swear word, Pagan. No, you can't say that because he's because what you know what'll happen? He'll wind up being the super reliever uh, in the season, end of the season when we need him. Well, I hope you're right on that, George. I hope so too. <laughs> so anyway, the Twins up uh, three games with two games left in Cleveland as we record this. Boy, five games. You know that. I think that that uh, that kind of familiarity breeds content. Yeah, after playing three last week, yeah. uh, you, you kind of get to know each other, and yeah. uh, I think that's the reason why uh, even Josh Winder, who came off the uh, IL, had pitched a very good game in Game Two on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you get Jorge Polanco back. That gives a little lift to the team. Polanco helps a lot, and I tell you, my new my new favorite guy these days is Gary Sanchez. Yeah. You know, and I mean, and I. It, He's a good sized man. Oh. He can put a hurt on. He can put a hurt on that tater, Absolutely. and it's uh, you know. So you see, start start seeing these bats come together, and when you have when you have uh, uh, Buxton and Korea and 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 Max, I mean, you almost have a murderer's row, a mini murderer's row. Well, I think they hit three hundred and what six home runs three seasons ago, two yeah. seasons ago, whatever, or three seasons ago, and uh, we're not going to get anywhere close. To that. That's true, but my question for you is, when Sano comes back, where are they <laughs> going to put him? Ooh, uh, well, that's a that's a that's a that's a great question. Uh, Could he go uh, over to first because they don't have? Well, yeah, they, he's going to he's going to have to play back. first. I mean, that's where he's that's where he's been playing. That's where he'll go. I don't think he'll play first base very much. I think they they will keep him in the uh, DH, DH role if they can, uh, because right now, as they were saying on the radio yesterday, right now. It seems to be Jeffers or Sanchez. One's catching, one's DHing, yeah. kind of type. When Byron's not in there, yeah. and that they're work, you know, they're tr- 
Jeffers is playing good ball right now. Jeffers is playing good ball, and I'm amazed. You know, where they get these catchers is beyond me, but both of them are performing pretty well. They have to be happy with uh, and Well, know, they signed Sanchez, I think, since the last time we spoke. Yeah. They, they thought maybe the Twins were going to try to flip Sanchez and, uh, you know, get him from New York when they got rid of Donaldson and all that other malarkey, all that trade stuff, and that he was going to be trade bait at the trade deadline. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I think, think the that's twins. Gonna I think either. the twins want to keep them around. Yeah. Uh, everybody was a little upset that you know we had uh, Finer, the shortstop that ended up in New York, was having a fabulous season, and we got Gio Urshela, and everybody's like, "Well, why do we need Gio Urshela? Do you, have you seen him play third base?" No, yeah, Gio is doing really well, and I saw that he's hitting the ball. No, he, I don't even. Uh, to me, Gio can go and bat two twenty two. I it's, the way he plays third, third base. base, and then Carlos Correa. Uh, you, you watch it just. Just watch Carlos Correa when the ball comes to him. You, you know, he's, he's a ballet you know, dancer. You know the 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 fields in the majors aren't like what I watch out at Sheila Field. No slam against the janitors or custodians at ISD three sixty one. But you know you're going to get a pretty true hop. But he's so smooth and, and so confident, and boom, the ball, even the hand, he's a major leaguer. Guess where that free hand is at, yeah, right over, yeah, boom. And he's a gold glove major leaguer. He is the creme de la creme. And, and then every throw is right here. Oh. Every throw is right here. It's not here. It's not there. It's not up here. It's right here. And it doesn't matter whether he's on the run, whether he sets his feet, whether he's throwing it through oh, his I ear. Think he's, I, think he's, I think he's at the heart of that defense. But, you know, I'll tell you, if you take a look at um, if you take a look at uh, at, at Louie, do you see his scattered hits? How do you, you don't, you don't shift your infield for him? No, and, and here's the thing. Luis played second base while Jorge was on the IL. Yeah. Well, you got to have Luis in the lineup, right? Have him in the lineup. But you got to have Jorge in the lineup. That's you nice. got to have Carlos and you got to have Gio. So there's your infield, right? There's yeah. your four guys. So guess who's playing first base? That brings the question of when Sano comes back, well, he can he play first base? Is, is how can you not have Luis Arise in the yeah, lineup? Are you what, are you going to bench Luis? I don't think he's so. leading the majors in on base percentage yeah. and, and hitting. And you're going to sit him on the bench because What's Miguel's going to strike out eight times in one game. He's about third and leading in the league in hits and yeah, he yeah he's he's, he's right up there. So and then of course you know you look at the outfield right now they're 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 baby and Buxton back in Celestino's playing in center and Alex Kirilov's been playing first base and he was ripping the cover off the ball in the at AAA and he's been doing very well with the well, with Gordon's the with the big club. He's been playing well and it's just you know okay so that begs the question yeah. Who do they trade coming up here in, in, well, it's June 29th today. Happy birthday, Dad, up in heaven. Thank you. Um, by July 29th, we're going to have uh, some trades made. There's going to be there's going to be players on this Twins squad that are no longer going to be with the Twins come August 1, and it's the question of who's it going to be, be and who which starter because I'm, well, or closer, is it going to be that they're going to pick up? Well, who, who, who's out there? That's who's in the and, and that's what they have to. They still have to work. They still have to work on that. Uh, as Dwayne said, the middle, the middle uh, uh, relief man, and get a couple of those relief guys that can give you a couple, two, three innings. <clears throat> I think that we better get used to the fact that if you get five innings in, in a major league baseball game these days. You count yourself good. Yeah. And and so, you know, so you, whatever yeah, you're you, you, do with the pitchers, that's the, 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 the middle reliever, the whole idea you're going to have a two, th a three inning reliever? No, it's not going to happen. Those days Besides, are gone. Those days are gone. You got 13 pitchers, they make up the, the majority of your baseball team. Uh, you you, you, you got to use them. Which and of course, Wes back. Johnson, as long as we're talking about pitching, Wes yeah. Johnson, we talked about earlier leaving the team. Chris Archer, you keep mentioning him, I have to say, he has been the biggest. Uh, what's the right word? Um, who I think whose feelings were hurt the most of all the pitchers that that Wes Johnson is leaving. Uh, I think right now Chris Archer would take a bullet for Wes Johnson uh, to stay as the pitching coach. I think Archer believes that Wes Johnson understands him. Uh, the Twins have decided that they are going to basically go pitching coach by committee. They're not going to have a one pitching coach, they're going to have the coach and staff work together to do those kinds of things. Um, Archer basically said he's the best pitching coach I ever had. And, I mean, that's a guy, he's only known him, what, four months? Yeah. Uh, for for a, a guy who's been around for that long. So um, th I am interested to see how Archer pitches Archer's the next time. last time out, he looked, he looked very, he looked very, very good. good. Where is he going to be in here? My, Not here. 
Where is he going to be in here when he pitches the next time? And like you say, these guys are pros. Um, he'll know what he has to do. And besides, he can get a hold of Johnson anytime he wants. From this point in time, <laughs> it's basically psychological. You're not going to you're not going to change his delivery. Um, and I think sometimes they might. You know, Smeltzer talked about uh, you know changing his mind on pitches to get strikeouts yesterday. Smeltzer's not a strikeout pitcher, but did it yesterday. So you wonder, how, how much does that have to do with Wes Johnson? Or who, who is it that's pulling the strings? And it's, like you said, it sounds like it's Wes Johnson. So, um, you know, somebody said, what if the Twins go on to win a World Series or whatever? Will Wes Johnson be kicking himself? I think in the at the end of the day... No, no. Uh, he, no. He's he's a he knows exactly he's, what he's, he's a family guy, and I and I I get it. I understand it. I I do. I, I think I do. I, I he's mean, going I, home. I, I, I spend a lot of time away from home, and uh, I, I think I understand being gone all, maybe a lot, maybe too much, and uh, yeah. There, there's there's yeah. No, no, it is I, what it is. I don't want to get all whatever on you guys. No, but I, you know, I don't. I think Coach Johnson Co- is. All coaches understand all coaches that. Understand I think understand all coaches that. understand being away from your yeah. kids uh, sure. if, if if you're not there. So I think I think we can uh, all all respect that. Okay, we're we're on the baseball thing. I'm going to talk baseball. I don't know if you listened to me on the radio last night, uh, but the Senior Legion team played uh, Aurora last night. This was a pitcher's duel. Uh, yeah, Aurora ended up getting ten hits. They only scored three runs. Uh, Brian Koenig uh, had nine strikeouts, no walks. Matter of fact, I think he only had a three-ball count once wow. in the entire seven innings that he pitched. Uh, Dakota Cruz from Aurora, a big, thick kid uh, who apparently just moved into Aurora. Apparently, he's going to be a pretty good football player. This is the rumors from our good friend Randy Anderson. Oh, that's nice Hope to know. Randy's feeling better. And uh, anyway, yeah, just what Masabi East needed, another yeah. another guy in the backfield to, to, to run the ball. But anyway, uh, Dakota Cruz, he was cruising. I said it on the air twice last night. He had a good what a name. The what a name, Dakota Cruz. And uh, he, he had it going on. He ended the game with nine strikeouts, but uh, unfortunately ran out of gas, walked three guys in the seventh inning, and then the falls. Here's, I'll, I'll set it up for you the best I can. The falls is down three to two, bases loaded, two outs, 0-2 count on the batter. And Phil Talmadge says to me after the game, he says, I took a, took a chance that they were going to throw a ball in the dirt. They were going to waste one to Matt Worley to see if they could get him to chase. So Matt knew not to swing and torn Thompson, the fastest kid on the team, uh, at third base, and he's going to try to steal home. He's, as soon as the pitcher went into his motion, he took off for home, and the ball was in the dirt, and it was by about that much that he was out. The catcher got in front of the plate and blocked home plate, and the and the guys lose 3-2. to two. But it was a a fabulous game, and the fact that uh, Kaney threw, I think, only like in the mid 80s for pitches and threw seven innings. Uh, Cruz ended up with uh, just over 90 pitches, but he pitched six and two thirds innings. Um, it was a fun game. Uh, I, the the Senior Legion team, if you live in the falls, you've got to get out and watch this team. They are fun to watch. They put the ball in play, and and the best part of it, and I don't want to jinx them, they don't make. Errors. Oh, that's a they big one. Don't, there was one. There was basically one major error in that game last night that actually scored the run in the seventh inning for the uh, for the falls. But the this team has played seven games now. They're five and two. And if I remember right, I think they've only got like three errors in seven games. That's unheard of in high school it ball, is. Legion ball. It, it's no. it's so they're fun to watch. They play the game the right way. Uh, they got three super seniors in Tucker Hill and Brian Caning and Joe Telmage. Uh, they have been kind of that mix with the high school kids, and they've kind of pushed it all together. And uh, you got a kid who's going to be a ninth grader in Hayden Swenson playing shortstop for this team. Uh, goes out there and plays good ball. Um, so if you got a chance, they play at home this Friday. They've got uh, two weeks left in the regular season. You should go out, get yourself a hot dog. As George always says, what better way? Get yourself a hot dog, a bag of chips, and a soda pop. Go support the team. Go out and cheer these kids on. Uh, it was a lot of fun last night. Uh, a game that probably could have been done in 90 minutes, a seven-inning game. It, 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 it was fun. When you're not walking anybody and, uh, and putting the ball in play a lot, yeah. It goes quick. It goes quick. It so goes quick. Uh, get out there. Quit sitting on your duffs at home. You can do that during the winter. Or some Sometimes other he gets back into this coaching mode. Like, now! Cliché. Hear me? Sitting on duffs. He never said that when he coached. 
<laughs> and holy balls? <laughs> holy, anyway, not, never, never, anyway. Never. So, uh, anyway, summer uh, ball, Little League Baseball coming to an end this week. Uh, the playoffs there, it's, of course, Eli's into it, and uh, he is on the team that was seeded number one. They got their butts handed to him last night, 12 to 5. So now they got to come through the losers bracket. So guess, guess what we do? Uh, we get to go watch even more baseball, which is just fine. You know me. I, oh. if they're keeping score, that's right. If they're keeping score, we got yeah, we got to yeah. be there. So, uh, so that's the the local stuff. Uh, of course, Fourth of July coming up. We got Fourth of July. We even got a blues band going to the uh, the garden. We got a blues. Yeah. Yeah, a blues brass band coming over yeah. from Wisconsin Sunday okay. night. Yeah. I, I, I saw they were a brass band. I didn't really know what to, uh, to you expect. Know, sometimes brass bands can really be really be funky. Um, I, uh, there's, a, there's a band in New Orleans called the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. And I always I saw them a couple of times. And boy, I'll tell you, you might not think that you're going to go marching, but they go by you. You got right in, and it's just uh, you got to go with. You got to go with, yeah. Well, I heard that they have a horn section, obviously yeah. with the brass uh, yeah. in the name. Uh, I, I think I heard the mayor say that it's an eight-piece band with a horn section. Yeah. And uh, they play on Sunday night, starting at nine o'clock. Yeah, I'm gonna sneak um, over and give them a listen. I, I know I've got to get up early on the Fourth of July because I've got to do the morning show by myself. So I know I got to get there ah. early, but I may, I may have to. Uh, Go take partake just a little bit of this to see to see what they're going to uh, what they're going to bring to the forefront. Good idea. So, anyway, should be interesting. Uh, uh, you got anything else in there? No, I don't think so. Let me see. No. Uh, did, 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 does everybody know that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are three and zero, baby? They are three they, and zero. They they, and they lucked out the other night, but uh, they won. I, I'm, I'm I'm going to say it this way. BC is two and zero. British Columbia Lions in the CFL now, folks. We're talking in case you're not following along. They played two games. They scored 59 in the first game and 44 the second game. That's 103 points. Now, I know that scores the points a little bit, maybe sometimes a little bit more in the Canadian Football League. That's a ton it's of still points. A ton. That's a ton of points. It's, uh, it, the thing of it is, is all those points. It's the zero at the other end. You see? Yeah. Toronto scored three, yeah. 44 to three, and I think 59 to. 15, I think, was the first yeah, week. So that, that, uh, that's what wins those games. The USFL championship game, of course, is this weekend. Uh, I don't know if anybody gives a rat's uh, behind uh, about that. I try. No, I see. To, this is. I got a. I got a notice from my friend out in Portland, and he says, "Here's the championship, and here's the promo." And he shows the promo of one of the guys we played football with back in the '60s, and this is our famous Slats Fairbanks, who's going to. Who's 73 years old now, and he's strapping on, and he says, "Here's one of their quarterbacks now," <laughs> and he and he put this big promo out. I wanted to get a copy of it, but uh, I wasn't able to to rig it off my computer. But uh, Hartman, he does good things, don't you, Johnny? <laughs> So the USFL championship is uh, this weekend. So uh, obviously those are exciting. Well, football is only for the NFL is only a month days. away. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's just for, it's before for, the games. Right, right around the corner. Yeah. So, um, and I had a thought while you were yeah, oh, while you were jibber jabbering, a and, and I can't. Uh, and you lost the thought. Yeah, where 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 was I going with it? What, 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 what sport have you? Oh, I know what it was. You brought up Oregon. That's what made me think of it. Yes. Of course, the National the track, track, and, track and Field Championships were this past weekend. In Eugene. Uh, in Eugene. And the World Champions that are, are in Eugene. Yeah. You, you think I can get like four days off and I can go watch the that World Championships? That would be a good idea. You know, and people don't realize Eugene, that's the mecca of track and field in this country. This is the first time ever the World Track and Field Championships are going to be held in the United, United States. States. They've been going on since the 80s. Oh, yeah, they've been going on for a long Will time. Will they be back before I die? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so, because yeah. I'm not going to get to go this year. But, you know, that, that World Track Championships, uh, that's extraordinary competition. It just, it really is. I'm not sure just, I'm not sure what it does with uh, warring nations and such, but, I mean, she's, I used to watch some two or three Russian sprinters lined up. And, and go with every kid every, that we had. Everybody else. Win a couple of times. Of course, uh, the World Swimming Championships went on. Mm. Of course, the USA hauled golds, and I mean, it wasn't even uh, wasn't even close on the medal count. So, uh, congratulations to them. And of course, Wimbledon 
started uh, yeah, this week, and of course I love love uh, Wimbledon. I love watching the Grand Slams. Of course, you can't can't watch it all as much as I'd like to. Somebody asked me today if I was enjoying my time at the radio station. I said, I am. I said there's some things that I have to do that I don't like to do, like selling advertising. Shh, don't tell Jen I just said that. Anyway, but I said there's some things that I have to miss out on. Like when I was teaching, I could stay home and watch Wimbledon during the day, you know. But I wasn't getting to do that, so no. I, I, I was a little upset. A couple of uh, upsets in uh, on both sides of the ledger, actually, uh, of, of some top seeds, especially today and Wednesday for the women's. Uh, the number two seed and the number ten seed both go down, so... Uh, playing on the grass is a different animal. And Serena, uh, Serena went down. And Serena went down. Uh, you I'm could, not sure she should have been there. You watched, I assume, a little uh, bit of it. Uh, yeah. She, she was very exuberant, trying to get the crowd in. Ended up having to go to a third set. I think she ran out of energy. She did. That 40 year old body finally. She, well, she didn't look like she's in very good shape. She's a little yeah. bit, a little bit heavy. She's a powerful woman. Uh, yeah, know. and it's nothing personal, folks. Don't oh, no. uh, whatever. It's just that, that you know, she I don't think was in the best shape, and, and she's coming back from injury, hadn't played in a year. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm willing to give her some grace, but I will also say that I don't think we'll ever see her play at Wimbledon ever again. I don't think we will. Either. I, I think no. uh, we're going to kind of have a little swan song into the uh, U.S. Open. She'll get herself into the best playing shape she can for the U.S. Open. May try to make a heck of a run yeah. at the title. And uh, if it doesn't happen there, I think she will say, "I've had uh, enough. It's time, know, to go, I'm, time to go be a mom." I'm a, I'm a total, I'm a total Serena Williams fan. I think she's, she's fantastic. She's done more for the game and more for women's sports than just about yeah. anybody. Yeah. So uh, you know, if you'd have told me five years ago she wasn't going to win 24, 25, and 26 in the majors, I'd have laughed in your face. It's not going to happen. She's going to end up at 23. And the worst part about that is, is Rafa Nadal probably is going to end up overtaking her <laughs> and Margaret right. Court and be the all-time. And that will just grind. Yeah. That's 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 worse than, like, like I don't know. So look at that. He could wrestle That's Gables. worse than the Green Bay Packers winning a Super Bowl. Oh. There we are. I don't have anything to throw out at the camera. I can't do that. No, no, you don't. But I'll tell you what. There's one other thing. I, one I, more thing. See, I, I listened to a podcast from the Minnesota Gophers, and they were predicting for the football season. And okay. they said they they kind of went down, and they said, uh, you know, this will sound familiar. Ohio State, Michigan State, Ooh. Michigan, Minnesota. Wow. Over the cheese heads. They put us in the top four. He says, you know, the, the, the other one, you know, that are in the same tier as we are, of course, is uh, is Iowa and Penn State. I think okay. we're leaving the cheese heads behind. <sighs> well, so we got to end the show on that. Yeah, it, it's not going to get any right. better than that. that, that I, I, of course, I predictions like, are just... They are. This time of year, they're awful, but they're going to be playing football here in another six weeks, actually, in another month or so. And, uh, uh, you know, I, will, I think they're going to have a good football team. That's why, that's why I'm watching the CFL, man, because yeah. i I, I got to get my fix. Yeah, you're, you're a, football's an addiction and you're an addict. I, I was said I that. Am. Somebody told me that. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Take care.